split with Maurice White, creative differences or personal conflict. Let's dive into the juicy drama that surrounded Philip Bailey and Maurice White, the dynamic duo behind Earth, Wind & Fire's unforgettable sound. Now everyone knows these two were the driving forces of the band, but what the public didn't see were the cracks forming behind the scenes. Rumors started swirling in the late 80s that Bailey and White weren't seeing eye to eye. Whispers of creative differences became louder as the band's music began to shift. Fans couldn't help but notice that Maurice was stepping back more often, with Bailey increasingly taking the reins. Was it just Maurice's health issues, or was there more to the story? Some insiders claim it was a classic power struggle, with Bailey wanting to steer the band in a new direction, while Maurice clung to their original vision. Whatever the truth, this behind-the-scenes tension made everyone wonder if Earth, Wind and Fire could keep soaring without the harmonious partnership that made them legends in the first place. Religious Conversion and the Impact on His Music Philip Bailey's spiritual awakening in the early 80s didn't just change his personal life. It sent shockwaves through his career. Imagine the surprise when the man who belted out hits like Boogie Wonderland suddenly shifted gears and started releasing gospel music. Fans were divided. On one hand, some respected Bailey for following his heart and expressing his faith. On the other, many worried he was alienating the very audience that catapulted him to fame. Critics were quick to question if his newfound spirituality would clash with Earth, Wind and Fire's more eclectic, sometimes mystical themes. The tension was palpable with some speculating that his religious views might even be driving a wedge between him and the rest of the band. Bailey's decision to pursue gospel music wasn't just a career move. It was a controversy that had everyone talking about whether faith and funk could really coexist. The Balancing Act Philip Bailey's solo career was a double-edged sword that kept fans and critics on the edge of their seats. While his solo endeavors— especially the smash hit Easy Lover with Phil Collins, showcased his incredible range and versatility, they also sparked a debate about his loyalty to Earth, Wind and Fire. Was Bailey's focus on solo projects pulling him away from the band that made him a star? Fans couldn't help but wonder if his solo success would mean the end of Earth, Wind and Fire, as they knew it. The media had a field day speculating about whether Bailey was preparing to jump ship, leaving the band to flounder without its iconic falsetto. This wasn't just about music, it was about where Bailey's true allegiances lay, and whether the allure of solo stardom was too tempting to resist. Did Bailey dominate the band's direction? As Earth, Wind & Fire continued to evolve, there were rumblings that Philip Bailey was starting to call the shots a bit too much. With Maurice White stepping back due to health issues, Bailey's influence over the band's direction grew stronger. But not everyone was happy about it. Insiders whispered that Bailey's vision was beginning to overshadow the collaborative spirit that had always defined Earth, Wind, and Fire. Some band members reportedly felt sidelined, while fans debated whether Bailey was steering the group away from its roots. The controversy reached a fever pitch when the band's sound began to change, leading some to accuse Bailey of using Earth, Wind, and Fire as a platform for his own musical preferences rather than staying true to the band's original essence. Was Bailey dominating the creative process, or was he simply filling a leadership void? Either way, this controversy kept fans guessing about who was really behind the wheel of the earth, wind, and fire machine. True performance or technical necessity. In the world of live performances, few things are more scandalous than the dreaded lip-sync allegations. And yes, even the legendary Philip Bailey wasn't immune to these rumors. Over the years, there have been persistent whispers that Bailey, known for his soaring falsetto, might have occasionally relied on pre-recorded tracks during live shows. For an artist of Bailey's caliber, such accusations were nothing short of sacrilege. Fans who worshipped his live performances were left questioning whether they were really hearing the man himself or just a well-crafted illusion. Of course, the defenders were quick to point out the grueling demands of touring, and the need to preserve such a precious vocal gift. But the damage was done. Once the lip-sync rumors started, they were hard to shake off. Was Bailey simply taking precautions to ensure his voice lasted for the entire tour, or was he betraying the very essence of live music? The controversy lingered, leaving a stain on what was otherwise a flawless career. Philip Bailey's falsetto is the stuff of legends, 
but even legends aren't invincible. As the years went by, fans started noticing that Bailey's voice wasn't always hitting those impossibly high notes with the same ease as before. The speculation began. Was age catching up with the iconic singer, or were there deeper health issues at play? The pressure to maintain his signature sound must have been immense, and the toll it took on his voice became a hot topic among fans and critics alike. Some argued that Bailey should take a step back and preserve his legacy, while others insisted that he still had plenty of gas left in the tank. The real controversy, though, was about expectations. Could Philip Bailey continue to meet the impossibly high standards he had set for himself? Or was it time for fans to accept that even their idols aren't immune to the ravages of time? Spirituality versus Secular Success Earth, Wind, and Fire was never shy about incorporating spiritual and uplifting themes into their music, but when Philip Bailey started infusing his solo work with overtly religious messages, it ruffled some feathers. While songs like Shining Star and September were universal in their appeal, Bailey's solo gospel tracks had a more niche audience. Critics were quick to question whether Bailey was alienating fans who weren't interested in overtly Christian messages. The tension between spirituality and secular success became a recurring theme in Bailey's career, with some fans embracing his spiritual journey and others feeling left out in the cold. Was Bailey's religious conviction enhancing his music, or was it limiting his appeal? The debate was as intense as the music itself, with everyone weighing in on whether Bailey was staying true to his roots or drifting too far into preachiness. The Business Side of Fame No star shines without a few shadows, and for Philip Bailey, some of those shadows were cast by management and financial disputes. Like many artists who've been in the game for decades, Bailey and Earth, Wind and Fire faced their fair share of money-related controversies. From disagreements over royalties to disputes about contracts, the business side of fame often threatened to overshadow the music. Rumors swirled about Bailey clashing with managers over financial decisions, and there were even whispers of legal battles brewing behind the scenes. For fans who idolized the band, these revelations were a harsh reminder that even their heroes weren't immune to the cutthroat world of the music business. Was Bailey being taken advantage of, or was he simply a shrewd businessman protecting his interests? The truth was likely somewhere in between, but the controversies left a bitter taste in the mouths of many longtime fans. The band's global influence and criticism Earth, Wind and Fire's music was a melting pot of cultural influences blending African rhythms, Latin beats, and American soul into a sound that was uniquely their own. But with global success came accusations of cultural appropriation. Critics argued that the band, including Philip Bailey, had borrowed too liberally from other cultures without giving proper credit. The debate over cultural appropriation versus cultural appreciation was a hot topic, especially as the band's music continued to resonate with audiences around the world. Some felt that Earth, Wind, and Fire had crossed the line, turning other cultures' traditions into commercial hits without fully understanding or respecting their origins. Others defended the band, pointing out that their music was a celebration of diversity and a testament to the power of cross-cultural collaboration. Either way, the controversy added a layer of complexity to Bailey's legacy, challenging fans to think critically about the music they loved. Preserving Earth Wind and Fire's Essence in Modern Times As Earth, Wind and Fire marched on into the 21st century, the question of legacy loomed large. With Philip Bailey at the helm, the band faced the daunting task of staying relevant in a rapidly changing music landscape while staying true to their roots. Some fans argued that the band should stick to the classic sound that made them famous, fearing that any attempt to modernize would dilute their legacy. Others believed that Bailey and the band should embrace innovation, bringing Earth, Wind, and Fire's message of love and unity to a new generation. The debate over how to balance tradition with evolution was a source of controversy, with Bailey often caught in the middle. Should he preserve the band's original essence, or should he take risks to ensure their music remains impactful in a modern context? The answer wasn't clear, but one thing was certain. Philip Bailey's decisions would shape the future of Earth, Wind, and Fire for years to come.